a beta PDF or probability distribution function, which uses a dispersion factor called lambda. And I'll compare both symmetrical and asymmetrical distributions using this modified alpha and beta. The inputs are primarily the minimum, the most likely, and the maximum values for the distribution you want to have. In this cell, I have the modules that are used. The primary module to be used will be from the SciPy module, stats, and you grab the beta. There are two ways to calculate the shape parameters, alpha and beta. There's the original method, or method one, which is static. You cannot change the dispersion of the distribution. Whereas a method two or a modified version, which was first published by Voss in 2000, and then Onan in 2021 published a paper that explains how to use it. And here it is, so it's one plus lambda, the mode minus the min divided by the max minus the min for alpha. And beta just changes a little bit here where we use the max minus the mode. So let's go ahead and let's run this. The first thing I did was I input a minimum, a most likely, and a maximum value. And the size is the number of random samples that you want to run through the calculation. I'm going to do it for a series of dispersions. Now, I've put in here 150, 100, 200, 400, 600, 1,000, and 2,000 as the lambdas. But in actuality, I change it here in my loop by dividing by 100. The reason I've used these integers is because when I set up here my variable names where I need to add a character string to it, I can't put in a floating point. So I've used these values and then divide by 100. So then I have my plotting technique here. It will produce two plots. It will produce a PDF and an exceedance probability chart. So let's take a look at it. And we can see here for our symmetrical distribution, we can see a family of distributions. And over on the right is the legend, which shows you the lambdas that were used. So this brown one, it has a lambda of 0 0.01, is basically a uniform distribution. And as the lambda increases, the peakedness of the distributions increase. By the way, these blue lines here represent the min, the most likely, and maximum inputs as a reference. In the original method, method one, is essentially equal to a lambda of four, which would be this blue distribution. So you can see here that as you get to these lower lambdas of one or two, you're basically just barely able to pick out a peak. But when you get down to something of 0 0.01, there really isn't one anymore. Now we're going to take a look at an asymmetric distribution. And all things being the same, except here, I've changed the max value to 200 so that we won't have a symmetrical distribution. We'll have, we'll have an asymmetrical distribution. OK, that's run. And here we go. So you can see here, basically, the same legend, the same lambdas. But you can see that uh, the max value is now out here at 200, and it's asymmetrical. So it's a skewed distribution. Notice how it honors the most likely value. OK, so let's just compare these two on the same chart. So this is just plotting them so you can look at them on the same right next to each other. So we have the symmetrical and the asymmetrical. I've created a script here in this cell that does some descriptive statistics for the, uh, the symmetrical distribution in a, in a data frame. So this gives you a nice table. 
but interesting, I've plotted the lambda versus the standard deviation. And as you can see here, and as you would expect, that the standard deviation for the lower lambdas is much greater and it follows more or less a linear uh, trend. And let's do the same now for the asymmetric distribution. So we'll create that same table and we'll plot it up. And again, we see that we have a more or less a linear distribution. One last portion of this script is let's compare these distributions with box plots. So I put in a script here that will model the uh, box plots for different lambdas. And this is for the symmetrical. And I think the thing to note about here is that it more or less honors the, mi the min, the most likely, and max for these lower lambdas. But notice that as you get into higher lambdas, how the dispersion has decreased. And we don't honor the min and the max anymore. So ideally, with lambdas of less than four, you're more or less conserving the range that was established by the input parameters. Now we could take a look at this for the asymmetrical distribution. And again, it has that same uh, effect where with the higher lambdas, you don't honor the range that was established by the input variables. So again, here you can see, even with a lambda of four now, you really have uh, diminished that range. And so you might, with the, uh, the skewed distributions, you might want to stick around two. But I suggest you probably test your own uh, particular distribution when you do this.